Hello and welcome to Any New Mappers. This is a brief introduction to some of the patterns you should avoid as a new map maker in Beat Saber. It is highly recommended that you start out by following these guidelines and then later experiment with ways to break them cleanly once you're familiar with why they exist. These guidelines were created over time by the community and therefore were not applied to maps new players are familiar with, such as the old OST or the older top rated community maps. Beginner mappers may tend to follow patterns they've seen in songs they've played before, so this video hopes to help them by providing them with up-to-date information on what is generally considered the best practice when mapping a song. In-depth articles on all of these patterns discussed here and more can be found on the Beat Saber modding group wiki linked below. This wiki is incredibly thorough, providing additional details on these guidelines and many other helpful guides like how to get started with mapping. Before we begin, maps can certainly also have other issues outside of what is covered in this video, so it is highly advised that you get your map tested by others before releasing it as well as playing through it yourself during development. Now to start with. Number 1. Hand claps. A hand clap is one of the absolute most important patterns to avoid. It telegraphs to the player that they should slam their hands together, potentially costing them a lot of money in broken controllers, and likely being quite painful too. So how do you avoid this? Well, the easiest way is to simply offset one block by a row. That way you still get the same movement, but without the risk of damaging people or their equipment. As a bonus, it often scores better too, since it's easier to follow through with the swing. Number 2. Walls in both middle columns. Making walls that cover the centre two columns is one of the other much more egregious patterns, and like the hand clap can cause damage to the player and their equipment. It is suggested that you simply don't do this. A lot of people won't have the space to even move like that without breaking something. The popular community map editor, Mediocre Mapping Assistant 2, will also tell you this if you try to place one of these walls. While on the subject of walls, it is advised that you also avoid extended crouch walls as well. If you want to make the player exercise, multiple short crouches is better than a long one. It is both more comfortable and causes greater movement. Additionally, it allows for mixing in other things between the crouches, if you're careful with spacing. Remember that walls aren't fully transparent. Number 3. Face punches and the vibe check. These are block positions that can easily make the player hit their headset. VR headsets extend several inches out from the player's face, and most players will not be accustomed to playing around it, as it's easy to subconsciously forget about. Controllers also add another area of caution to each hand, making it even easier for accidental collisions to occur. To avoid this, be very careful with crossover blocks in the top lanes, especially at the same time. There are plenty of other ways to do crossovers, and it's easy to mistake the distance of a block when you're inside an editor rather than in the game, so remember to test your maps before you upload them. Number 4. Vision Blocks Vision blocks are notes that cannot be seen due to another object or note obscuring them from the player's line of sight. These occur most often when you place an object in the two central positions of the grid. The problem with this is that an obscured object gives the player drastically reduced time to react relative to the rest of the map. Placing notes, bombs or walls in the centre two positions of the grid can make it practically impossible to react to the next objects especially if they're directly behind the vision blockers. Make sure every move the player has to make is communicated clearly. You should be able to see all the notes and bombs, and it should be obvious which direction you need to swing or move. This also means you should never place blocks inside of each other. If you're not certain, just don't place any objects inside these two squares, and always assume that walls are entirely opaque for the purposes of note and bomb placement. Number 5. Hot Start a hot start is when the notes or obstacles start immediately in the song, with no time for the player to see anything coming or prepare themselves. Don't place anything in the first two seconds of a map. If you have some sounds really early that need mapping, you can add silence to the beginning of your song using audio editors like Audacity. Number 6. Hammer Hits A hammer hit is a block with a swing direction facing straight into a bomb. Having to stop your arm mid-swing rather than following through on the block is wholly unsatisfying to many players, but this placement is also very unfriendly to the scoring system in Beat Saber, where you get more points if you properly continue the swing all the way. To receive the maximum score, you need to have a swing arc of 100 degrees before the block, and another 60 degrees afterwards. The final 15 points are awarded based on how accurate to the centre the cut is. Number 7. Double Directionals, or DDs. DDs refer to two note blocks placed in the sequence in which they are facing in the same or similar directions. This is actually a pretty common pattern for easy and normal difficulty, where there should be plenty of time between notes to react and adjust, but for hard and above it is expected that your map will have flow, 
that is to say that any swing will almost always lead into an approximately opposite swing direction. Breaking this flow can be disruptive to an intense pattern and feels jerky and harsh to play. Additionally, having to hit two swings in the same direction rather than opposing ones actually doubles the speed you need to move your hand, requiring additional movement as if there was an extra note that the player may not be prepared for. A lot of new mappers make this mistake often, as the official maps sadly contain a lot of DDs, even on the higher difficulties where they're far less welcome. As a side note, double directionals will usually also break the rules of a more advanced concept known as parity, which you can learn more about in the wiki. Again, link in the description, and it's highly recommended that any new mapper reads it. Thankfully, eliminating these flow breakers is very easy if you use the latest community-made map editor, MMA2. In the Shift tab menu, press this button to have all these errors highlighted to you. Just make sure to increase the number at the top right to make it check more than three quarters of a beat. Most mappers will recommend at least three to four beats here, but there's no harm in cranking it to 1000 just to be sure. Number 8. 90 degree hits. A 90 is simply where the next hit direction is rotated 90 degrees from the previous one. This is a common pattern in lower difficulty maps where players have plenty of time to read and react to it, but the faster a map is, the worse it gets for the player's wrists and it is generally much more annoying to strike correctly for scoring purposes at speed 2 due to the harsh direction change, playing like a DD at times. Try to avoid 90 degree hits where possible, especially if they are in short succession. A potential alternative for hard and above difficulties can be a diagonal block. Number 9. Dot Spam A stream of dots can sound like an appealing way to get all those fast sounds mapped, without having to worry about patterns, directions, and all the hurdles that come with them including the difficulty of executing a fast manoeuvre. Unfortunately, dot spam doesn't play well. 99% of the time it just results in rapidly flailing the sabre around without any regard for the beat. Dots should mostly be used sparingly. If a part is too fast for the difficulty, simply map every other note rather than every single one. If the note could be a regular block, you should probably just use a regular block. Number 10. Hitbox Abuse this is where the extended hitboxes of the notes either overlap or make an accurate swing very awkward or impossible. In Beat Saber, the hitboxes do not match the blocks themselves. They're actually larger, and they look more like this. Because of the extended collision, blocks placed in this kind of pattern will feel bad for, or even impossible to play for score, depending on how badly they overlap. Now, with that out of the way, keep in mind that most of these points can be bent or even broken in some situations by experienced mappers. This is meant as an introduction for new players to get started rather than an absolute. That concludes the most common hurdles for new mappers, but it is in no way a complete list. There are plenty of other things you can do that may negatively impact your map. A more advanced guide to all of this, as well as further patterns not covered here, is available at the BSMG wiki. The link is in the description. It also goes into further details and has many more useful guides and explanations for everything related to custom maps, and even many other types of modding for Beat Saber. The wiki is an amazing resource for mappers, and everything touched on in this video can be found there. Now finally, remember that testing the map is an important step to ensure that it plays well, and the mapper is not always the best judge of that. External testing is very important, and there's even an article on how to get help testing your map on the wiki as well. Thank you for watching, and please don't do hand claps.